Please welcome Celine Buck, Center for International Governance Innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, um, our, our uh, policy brief uh, team made a number of recommendations, some of which have just been outlined by my esteemed colleague Otmar, um, but they, they included phasing out fossil fuel subsidies and, and putting a price on carbon to harness the transformative power of the market, as, as Otmar has just described. It also includes the essential investments required by multilateral development banks, as been, has been described by Lord Stern and strengthening and reorienting investment strategies to exploit the significant opportunities of low carbon climate resilient infrastructure. But transforming, transforming the finance system is also needed to enable and drive change. And I will speak about the proposals made by the Climate Policy and Finance Task Force's green finance and uh, innovative small and medium sized policy briefs. These proposals have as their goal to accelerate the alignment of capital markets and financial systems, innovative solutions, and resilient sources of employment in emerging firms with climate action and economic growth for the good of society. We recommend the standardization of green finance norms and practices, including green bonds. For example, the green bond principles of the Global Capital Markets Association as, as one way of doing it. The harmonization of climate-related financial risk disclosure standards across the public and private sectors and globally, globally and particularly the private sector-led task force on climate-related financial risk disclosure. The development of mandates to establish equity and debt markets for sustainable infrastructure, as was just mentioned, and fit-for-purpose credit instruments to ensure that green technologies and uh, from resilient emerging firms can grow to create confident local identities and deploy innovative solutions to climate change. We propose that to do this, uh, we should implement a shared platform which would be focused on implementing the findings of the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Risk Disclosure. In time, the global governance of such a platform could be assured by the members of the Financial Stability Board, that is to say finance departments, financial market regulators, central, and central banks. This platform could also serve as a monitoring system for the implementation of progress on green and sustainable finance. Local governance of the platform could be assured through active engagement of stakeholders by the finance minister and the finance deputy. Local stakeholder engagement could be structured in both national and regional expert groups, such as already is being done in the EU, and could include civil society, including ENGOs, community groups, and indigenous peoples, private and public sector experts in the, risk, in the physical risks of climate change, including property and casualty insurers, and fiduciaries, such as pension funds and life insurers, who must, by the nature of their obligations, understand the transition and liability risks of climate change if they are to serve their fiduciary duties to those they insure and to those for whom they provide pensions. SMEs should also be part of this platform, small and medium-sized enterprises, because they have innovative solutions to, to climate change and they are also at risk of the physical consequences of climate change. These firms that are at the origins of the Schumpeterian chain described earlier today provide 60% of employment and 50% of GDP in high income countries and 50% of employment and 40% of GDP in low income countries. We believe that these proposed policies and this platform offer, offer a comprehensive approach to climate policy, sustainable infrastructure and finance that connects society to the challenges we face. As I close, I'd like to acknowledge the human spirit that stands behind these very human ideas. I'd like to thank the 84 scholars from 42 think tanks and seven universities and four ENGOs who brought their deep expertise and goodwill to build trust and, engage and engagement around these recommendations in our climate policy uh, and finance task force. <coughs> I'd also be remiss if I did not think, thank our colleagues in the B20, headed by Mr. Bach and the C20, who made it possible to sign a joint communique on energy and climate change, including reference to sustainable infrastructure. 
Thank you.